Hello and welcome, gamers and gamettes. I'm your host, B.R. Brainerd. The press embargo is over at last, so I'm eager to take the gag off and start discussing the upcoming Elder Scrolls Online MMORPG. This game is still under development, so anything that I say in this video could be subject to change. That said, the game is going to be released in two months, so 95% of what you hear today is still going to be true in April. If there's enough interest, I'll release a full review to coincide with the game's release, as well as an upcoming Let's Play series. Let's talk about first impressions. Character creation, there are four classes with more on the way. That's okay. Plenty of sliders to adjust everything from cheekbone width to eyebrow plumage, but there's not a lot of range. One thing I've learned is that the best way to test the power of a character creation system is to try and make the ugliest, most ridiculous possible character you can. You don't try and make a test character pretty, the designers are expecting that, no. You try to make him ugly, and that'll show you what the engine is really capable of. And right here, this is the best I could do. I mean, I wouldn't want to look like this myself, but it isn't exactly Saints Row, if you know what I mean. Of course, the most obvious thing to look into is the graphics. They're pretty good. MMOs are never cutting edge like shooters. But the Elder Scrolls Online, I think, is comparable to Skyrim in terms of looks. Unmodded Skyrim, that is. Skyrim with mods is still one of the best looking games out there, and is also quite capable of bringing a new $5,000 Alienware tower to its knees. I'm afraid I can't play that, Dave. Visually, the Elder Scrolls designers are definitely trying to target Skyrim players. It feels to me as if they mimicked or even copied the lighting engine directly out of Skyrim, which is fine. Uh, the UI is very clean and minimalistic compared to most MMOs. In fact, what's probably the most succinct way to define this game is that it's two games in one, Skyrim and World of Warcraft. And I have to admit, it's a little schizophrenic at times. They haven't fully integrated these two visions into one concept. An example of this has been some of the difficulty that I've encountered trying to play during the beta weekend with some of my friends. Now on the beta, everything takes place on one giant server, and supposedly the main game will be the same. Just one giant mega server that splits into phases based on how you answer a questionnaire. You know, maybe this is how Skynet gets started, like instead of being a military project, it's a mega server designed to cater to gamers until it finally gets fed up with all the bitching and decides the only winning patch is not to play. Putting aside the clear disadvantage of a robot-born apocalypse, the HAL 9000 mega server is a big step forward in dealing with one of the old bugbears of online RPGs. No longer shall star-crossed nerds be split in twain by servers, adrift upon a lonely sea of pay-gated character transfers and bad ping times. All you need now is to answer a questionnaire in the exact same way to get into the same phase, live in the same region in the real world, have your characters travel to the same region in the game world, be of similar level, be of the same faction, of which there are three, be playing on the same platform, and hopefully be on the same stages of the same quests. I imagine that a lot of people are going to buy this game on a console thinking that it's Skyrim with multiplayer. It's not really that right now. It's more like it gives you the ability to play more Skyrim while watching an epileptic Khajiit teabag a dead body in the background. It's the difference between watching a movie and watching a movie as a parent with kids in the next room. Hey mommy, I found a dead Argonian! Now one of the things the questionnaire is supposed to solve is that it's supposed to segregate the player base by age. And I know that a lot of you will definitely like that feature, but have no doubt there's still going to be immersion breaking with players of any age. Distractions aside, the solo gameplay is pretty good. It's a lot like Guild Wars 2 if you traded a PvP emphasis for more single-player immersion. In instances in a group, the Elder Scrolls Online has something called Group Synergy, and it seems to be a lot like how combos worked in EverQuest 2. Abilities pop up, and if you use them at the right time, the group gets bonuses that make the fight easier. Plus, bonus experience and possibly even drops, so raiders are going to have to take it very seriously. The developers have put effort into providing nice extras, lore and dialogue, but all of it is skippable, and in a group, people tend to do that. You know, it tends to become a race. So if you're planning on going from level 1 to 50 with the same tight group of friends, it's possible, but the Elder Scrolls Online isn't really the ideal game for that. What's clear to me right now is that the way to really enjoy the game is to stop and smell the roses. Go exploring, read the books, listen to the dialogue, you know, take it slow. There's a lot to appreciate, and while any online RPG can be a grind, this game is only a grind if you choose to play it that way. You start out with one weapon and an ability bar which gives you access to five active abilities maximum. So the skill system is not tall but wide, meaning you do have a lot of tools to customize your build. You get to pick what kind of armor you want to wear, so it is possible to make a battle mage that can tank in a pinch. One of my burning questions is how effective these off-brand builds will be, and it's too early to say. 
But most of your skill points are either going to go into passive abilities or they're going to go into spending points to improve skills that you already have. This is clearly a design decision that's being driven by console compatibility. Now, of course, the quality of a game isn't defined by the raw number of abilities that you have. I mean, League of Legends is the most popular game in the world right now, and there you only get four abilities that unlock over time. But what this does change is the style of the combat. Because the combat system has a small number of abilities that you can use at any one time, fighting is less about strategy and combos and more about precision. Now at level 15 you do gain the ability to swap to a secondary weapon, but you can't swap in combat, which means that it's a little bit like respecking. If your tank dies in the middle of a fight, you can't switch your Nightblade into tank mode and take over, but it does make it easier to find people to fill every role, and the traditional triad of healer, tank, and DPS is maintained in this game. However, because you have to invest skill points and actually practice your separate roles in addition to just gaining levels, finding the right combination of players to go and do an instance might be difficult. Let's talk about the NPCs. There is a day and night cycle that revolves every five hours of real time. NPCs don't have a daily routine mapped to that cycle because there's no ability to wait or rest or accelerate the clock in this game. So if they kept the old system two hours out of every five, you wouldn't be able to turn in quests. The NPCs are all voiced, and the acting is high quality, with a few heavy-hitting celebrities like John Cleese and Malcolm McDowell on the payroll. In the Elder Scrolls tradition, your dialogue choices usually aren't all that meaningful. There's no conversation wheel or disposition system, or approval points as the result of dialogue choices that I've encountered so far. So you don't really roleplay a character all that much. And this is true in the entire series. NPCs have mostly just been audiobooks that dispense lore and quests. And sometimes, to be honest, I prefer it that way, so hey, it comes down to taste on this one. In terms of interaction, you can pick up flowers or items out of jars and crates, and they do respawn, but you can't move the crate. You can't sit down in chairs. You can't drop items into the world. As far as I know, Ultima Online was the last MMO that really let you do this. And having more interaction is technologically feasible, so it's a shame that Zenimax has missed an opportunity here. The Elder Scrolls would have been a perfect platform. I know that players stacking crates in front of a door would get annoying, but freedom like that also leads to some of the most memorable moments in these games and really provides the kind of experience that you can't get in a solo RPG. And it does demonstrate what I think is the biggest problem in the design of this game, which is that Zenimax fears their player base. They're so worried about players trolling and breaking immersion that they've really curtailed your freedom. That makes for a pretty odious combination because you still have immersion breaking from other players, combined now with the added handicap of having your creativity limited and the gameplay homogenized. As some of you know, I have a history with online RPGs. I did a series for Star Wars The Old Republic back when it was in beta. I played World of Warcraft off and on for about five years. I played EverQuest before that, UO, even multi-user dungeons, which were just text-based online RPGs. So I've had a chance to watch this genre grow up from the beginning, and it's that perspective that I'm going to be bringing to a new series about the Elder Scrolls Online. The upcoming videos will be done in a similar style to my Star Wars The Old Republic series, because The Elder Scrolls Online is going into another weekend push starting tonight, Friday the 7th. They've also said that at some point the game will go into open beta, so if everything goes well and the servers are online, I can start gathering footage for that series right away. In conclusion, I can see The Elder Scrolls Online being a divisive game. I certainly haven't made up my mind yet. MMOs as a category of entertainment are controversial even within the community of gamers, you know? There's a lot of gamers who look at MMOs the same way that backwards pundits on television look at video games broadly. You know, they're hard drugs. You tell one of these people that you play video games, and you might as well have told them that you like to shoot amateur bukkake films in the back of a church. Hey, come on, it's just a hobby of mine. The thing to keep in mind is that The Elder Scrolls Online is very much an MMO. It provides a familiar MMO experience, and the differences between it and, say, Star Wars The Old Republic are minor. But I do think that it will make for a fun and entertaining video series, so we'll see how it performs. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely let me know in the comments what you think. Whatever advice you want to give is going to be used to inform the next video. I've been your host, BR Brainerd. Have fun and game on!